Thanks for messing around in the Vampire Survivors Beswick, episode 300. Yep, that's 300 episodes of beating every stage with every character. And what better way to do it than beating one stage with every character remaining for that stage? Yes, that's right. It's time for the legendary Eumelise to finally be finished with. Every character that hasn't beaten it, which is almost 70. Yes, 71, I think. We'll now be beating this stage before your eyes and doing nothing because there's nothing to do. Four at a time, end the time. So, because I now have who knows how much long to break out of my cage, break out of my system, I'm going to be once more talking about everyone's favorite topic, World of Warcraft PvP. So over the course of World of Warcraft, I have played three different character classes to main status. I never really did alts. Back in Classic and Burning Crusade, I was a paladin, the Alliance human. Worst class, worst class ever it is beyond awful to play Paladin in Vanilla and Burning Crusade. And anyone who says it was good, it's horrible. In Wrath of the Lich King, I was a Death Knight. And in Legion, Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands, I was the Demon Hunter. So I'm going to tell some stories about my time PvPing just along the way for all the classes. That's going to be fun. It's really the only thing I can talk about now. This is a post-recording. So, hey. With some other stuff. Act on at the end. I'll get the thumbnail off there. So, Paladin. Oh, what a day, what a day, what a day it was. Uh, so, Paladin in PvP in Vanilla World of Warcraft Classic was beyond god-awful. They had no damage, absolutely terrible damage. The only way you did damage was with your auto-attack and an ability that only activated on auto-attack consistently. Otherwise you had like a 15 or 30 second cooldown where you used up what buffed up your auto attack to do extra damage. You had a very lousy dot that you had to spec into or a long range that doubled it a heal that most people didn't spec into because you had to get an atrocious amount of gear in order to actually use it correctly. Most people in those days weren't going to actually know how to do that correctly. So if you actually wanted to be effective, you had to get optional stuff, trinkets, damaging trinkets, little side gear pieces that could help you out. And yet it still wouldn't be enough. A paladin in vanilla had no way to close a gap with any class at range. You just lost. There was nothing you could do. You couldn't beat a hunter. You couldn't beat a mage. You couldn't beat a warlock. You couldn't beat anything that tried to fight at range. You couldn't beat a priest. Because, well... You ran at the same speed at them. Eventually, you could get a talent to increase your move speed, but it still didn't matter. There was nothing you could do. You couldn't catch up to them, and they could just flip and use their dots to slowly burn you down. You had the ability to purge off dots, but that doesn't matter. You're still taking that damage. They're going to be better with mana for you, since the Paladin, Paladin was terrible. And for the classes that engage in melee, well, Warrior beat everything. A Rogue could also beat everything. And that was it. You'd lose any fight you got into if you, unless you had extreme stat bonuses or luck or anything like that. Paladin was beyond terrible to play. It was just beyond awful. There were so many fights on the forums and stuff about it. But it all changed at one moment between at the very end of the vanilla when the Burning Crusade was in its pre-patch state when you got all your fancy new talents. Ten more levels, ten more talents. No, 10 more talents, points. At the very end of the Retribution class tree, you could get Crusader Strike. And this legendary ability changed everything. Because we went from having no damage at all to very, very strong burst damage. So, to explain this in more detail, a paladin cast a, on themselves a 30 second seal. Either a seal of righteousness to deal bonus damage on every hit, or a seal of command, which did more damage but less frequently, but ultimately ended up being more. You could then judge that to do more damage, but consume the buff in the process, which was horrible, which is one of the main reasons why Paladins had so much mana issues. Uh, you also had a stun for six seconds, which was very good, but very inconsistent for other reasons I'll get into otherwise. And if you Hit a stun target with Judgment of the Crusader, it would do even more damage. 
you could talent into that crappy AoE, which you had to to get uh, Seal of Command. Was a talent at that point, which is fine. And on top of that, Retribution Tree, yeah, that was where Crusader's Sake ended up being. In one of the patches along the way, Paladins also got a Execute ability. Ability you can only use against targets against low health. It was a ranged magic dealing damage attack of Holy. Uh, Horde complained awfully about how it was so strong, how you had a ranged execute, but the damage was bad. You couldn't increase it. Increasing magic damage in those days was horribly inefficient and bad to do. You are not going to do that on a paladin. And on top of that, all the schools of magic in World of Warcraft have a flat, like, 5% chance to avoid it. But I will swear to God himself, any god you want, the creators of Blizzard, they show me the code, I will call them liars. And all holy attacks actually had a 15% chance to be resisted. And over, or heck, even higher than that, sometimes it felt like. And the orcs, one of the horde races, they had a talent that actually gave them higher resistance to stun, too. So your hammer of justice, your stun was also holy, so it was almost impossible to hit an orc with hammer of justice because of the resistances. Well, all this didn't matter. Even if it was a ranged execute, all you could do was help other guys. You were not going to beat anything in a direct fight. The numbers just couldn't be there, even if you had all your tricks and turns and all that. This all changed with the Burning Crusade pre-patch with Crusader Strike. It was an actual attacking ability. And now we suddenly had incredible burst. You could auto-attack, Crusader Strike, get your judgment off, hammer, all that, hit everything you have, and another Crusader Strike, and this would usually get most classes that you would be hitting down low enough to get the Hammer of Wrath on, and then maybe another auto attack or something, or another lucky ability. But it was enough. It was just enough to turn the Paladin from one of the worst PvP classes, possibly the worst PvP class in a fight, into a very strong, considerate one. Yeah, other classics could still outplay you, and you were really kind of screwed against Mage, but if you managed to get the drop on them, you might actually have a chance if you were just lucky enough, just competent enough. And like before, we were just completely screwed. And I tore it up in the pre-patch on the battlegrounds and the occasional even bit of open pearl fight. I went from just being decked out in mostly blues to, heck, I my only weapon. Yeah, I was all in blues. with like a few bits of purple gear and the unstoppable force. I had like ball ringer wrists and whatnot. And the unstoppable force for my hammer, which you could get by just sheer grinding out of the Alaric Valley Battleground. But I just tore it up. I tore up so much. They changed the honor system it works with uh, Burning Crusade launch too. I just fought and I fought and I fought. And my pathetic nature, it got me Grand Marshal's Claymore. The coolest weapon in vanilla. Coolest weapon looking in vanilla. Absolutely amazing. Cool looking. Cool looking. I still consider it my default weapon for that paladin today. This whole look is just sort of iconic in my mind. And of course, things changed. When Burning Crusade came out at full, they decided, no, Crusader Shake shouldn't be on a 6 second cooldown, it should be on a 10 second cooldown, and this sort of wrecked our burst. And you know other classes got better talent and stuff, and just things came out ahead and worse and all that, and all that. But then, late into the cycle, I was doing PvP again, they finally allowed you to get more like purple gear out of PvP, just from generic PvP, instead of high arenas, high kills, all that. I was doing All Drag Valley again, I was... Really deep into actually, I think I was actually all purple stuff at this point. Both then because the gear was purple. So I was in AV. I had taken down the first Horde Tower. This is when things, the meta was kind of getting really unsettled. We'd taken down Icefall Tower. I was dead or something. I was coming down the middle path and I saw that, oh hey, we'd taken Stone Hearth Bunker back. That's odd. That usually doesn't happen. It's, I mentioned this earlier in the other one with Megalomania about how Stonehold Bunker is the most worthless defensive fortification in the game. But some guys were fighting over it, so I decided, yeah, hey, let's head over there. And what followed was like, no joke, probably about 20 minutes of some of the most intense PvP action I got. Myself and just a couple of other guys, maybe about five to seven of us total, just fought and fought and fought endlessly. I popped multiple potions, flasks, like healing, mana. I healed so much. I even managed to disengage from combat and get some food back. Heal myself up. I was a good paladin. I knew when to heal. I knew when to damage. I knew when to intercept. I was good at my job, even back in vanilla when they were crap. 
this is one of the most superior moments I've ever felt playing the Paladin. We just fought and fought and fought. Probably like in the end, 15 Horde came running by fighting us and we just kept fighting them off again and again and again. Eventually it just stopped. We'd, you know, we'd killed them off all a few times, had a short break, but then just kept coming. And eventually though, they just stopped. They were just sitting up at the red, overlooking the bunker, looking down at us. And we were just sitting out on the windows, looking back at them. It was probably one of the most glorifying moments in my entire time playing World of Warcraft. It was kind of incredible. Uh, when, I don't know if those guys ever played. I never talked to them. We just fought all the other alliance beside me. Man, just looking up that, seeing them not try to do anything. It sticks with me, even like all the years later. It's been so many patches since then. It's been Wrath, it's been Kata, it's been Pandarian, it's been Wad, it's been Legion, it's been BFA. Shadowlands, Dragonfright, now we're into War Within. Not that I'm playing any of those, or heck, not that I've played most of those. But still, that memory sticks out to me, even to this day. Just even as bad as things can be, you got those moments in your life, in the darkness. That shine brightly. Maybe it wasn't worth all the bad, but I still look back on that. I still think about it, and I still think about it as so it was one of the great moments of my PvP career. And of course, it doesn't quite top some of that stuff I pulled off my Demon Hunter, but that's a story for the other video, for Megalomania. And I'll end the Paladin story here, see how well it stretches out. And then I'll see if I need to talk about my Demon Hunter, which is its own whole kettle of fish. And with that glorious level of nonsense, we are much more finished with Vampire Survivors. Beating every character on Il Melis or something to that effect, I don't know. Episode 300, Eswick. 1,373 down, 582 to go. So close to the end there. So close. Still so far away. So far away. Thanks for watching. I hope you had some fun. Please like, dislike, comment, or subscribe. This support keeps me going. Either way, have a good day and keep messing around in Vampire Survivors Beswick.